Welcome back to Newsmax Now. I'm Miranda Kahn. A stretch of Interstate 10 in Southern California will stay closed for a while after a bridge collapsed over the weekend. You can see the damage right here. Take a look at that. Wow. Officials say only one driver was injured. A series of severe storms and heavy rains collapsed the eastbound portion of the bridge spanning from Arizona to California. Former President George H.W. Bush, want to make sure I get the right one, is home from the hospital after breaking a bone in his neck during a fall. It happened last week at his house in Maine. His doctor says he didn't suffer any spinal damage, but he did crack a vertebrae. Donald Trump continues to sit at or near the top of polls. The latest from Monmouth University shows him second to Scott Walker. Trump is nine points behind. Dr. Ben Carson is in third. Jeb Bush and Ted Cruz are close behind. And former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani says New Yorkers want him back. He says they're sick of Mayor Bill de Blasio's leadership. Giuliani says he personally likes the mayor because his policies very destructive. So many members of Congress without even reading the agreement or knowing what all the components were, were just automatically uh, out of politics or something saying no. 99% of the world uh, is on the side of uh, the United States and our international partners in, um, in implementing this agreement. This deal will make America and the world safer and more secure. The highlights, or perhaps the lowlights, depending on which side you're on, of the Obama administration reiterating their support for the Iranian nuclear deal, trying to make us all feel a little bit better. The White House continues to insist the deal will make America safer and more secure. But Ayatollah's, or Iran's Ayatollah, Ali Khomeini, voiced support on Saturday for the deal. But he also said this, that it did not signal an end to Iran's hostility towards the U.S. and its allies, especially Israel. And here to discuss more about this issue, we want to welcome into our roundtable Newsmax Chief Washington Correspondent John Gizzi and Communication Strategist and National Media Relations Director for Citizens for Self-Governance, Attorney Tamara Colbert. Thank you both for joining us here today. Now, Thanks. Tamara, let's start Thanks with you. Now, you. if the deal is not going to change Iran's antagonism toward the U.S., and I want to be as optimistic about this as possible, why do we make the deal in the first place? Well, first of all, if the U.N. approves of any deal right off the bat, we already know that it's a bad deal. Um, specifically, we can look at the fact that sanctions will be lifted and Iran's going to have $150 billion to play with that the Obama administration says they will probably spend on their military, buying arms and upgrading their nuclear facilities. Not a good deal. Well, John, you know, we know the Ayatollah's got a uh, penchant for you know, kind of aggressive language here. Is this just talk? Is he trying to uh, just bang the, the drum here, or is this serious talk? The Ayatollah, like politicians in many countries, uh, has to deal with factions within his own official family. And in his case, he actually saw members in the farcical parliament in Tehran, uh, nonetheless raising their voices saying this agreement was uh, drinking poison from a nuclear chalice. That was a saying, by the way, that the late Ayatollah Khomeini he liked to use to justify no nuclear agreement with anyone. So he was moving, actually, away from the hard line within his own official family, and that's very significant. Now, many in the Iranian exile community, including Maryam Rajiva, the head of the Iranian resistance movement, which is the largest such group, said that this shows his own weakness in power and could lead to a toppling of the Ayatollah hmm. down the line. Interesting. In that sense, she feels there would be some good that came out of this agreement. Hmm. Interesting. Well, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu on Sunday said that the Ayatollah's comments show that Iran basically can't be trusted uh, Tamara, I want to ask you, how can the White House and now the U.N. Security Council today say this will make the world a safer place? You can see uh, Netanyahu's comments right there. In your opinion? Well, when you look at this deal, again, it allows Russia and China to sell arms to Iran. How is that a good deal for America or for Israel? This is a bad deal, and the fact that it went around Congress and Obama br helped broker this deal, it's really just that, an end run around Congress. And when you have former Ambassador Bill Richardson saying that this should have gone through the Congress 
again, you've got bipartisan support saying this is a bad deal. All right, so we're going to see what happens with this. We know President Obama thinks it's going to take a long time before we actually know whether or not it's good or bad. We'll ask you guys to stick around. We're going to come right back. More from tomorrow. And John, we're going to talk about this massive database that takes a look at a lot of sensitive information Mm -hmm. when we come right back. Plus, is it time to intern Muslim Americans immigrating into this country or Muslims trying to immigrate to this country? Also, what Franklin Graham is saying about what should be done with any Muslim who wants to immigrate into the United States. All that and much more we come back here on Newsmax now. Yeah, Obama trying to cross things off his bucket list, right? Obamacare, the Iran deal, and now this... Cuba. Cuba. And also this... And, and what he's trying to do with the suburbs, too, is reason yeah. for discussion. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back to our roundtable. And joining us again, Newsmax Chief Washington Correspondent John Gizzi and Attorney Tamara Colbert from the Citizens for Self-Governance. Today, there are new reports of another giant leap forward for Big Brother and the age of the Obama administration. We are hearing now that they are funding a massive database aimed at collecting Americans' personal information to promote racial and economic justice. Their words, the government will reportedly track individuals' health, their home loans, their credit cards, their places of work, neighborhoods, even their children. But let's take a step back and listen to what Representative Maxine Waters had to say regarding this database all the way back in February Hmm. of 2013. That database will have information about everything on every individual in Mm -hmm. ways that it's never been done before. And whoever runs for president on the Democratic ticket have to deal with that. I mean, it's very powerful what he's leaving in place. Now it could be used while he's still in office. John, what good could come from this? I don't see how much good could come to it, although I'm not going to question the intentions. Look, the revelations of Edward Snowden and the WikiLeaks that have come out have all made clear we live in an information age where there's a glut of information, some of it collected from mining data, uh, most of it that comes out not damaging, but given the breadth of it and the scope of it, uh, one could say it goes too far. And I would say eventually this information collection is going to fuel some efforts to cut it among civil libertarians and particularly among younger people. The Leave Me Alone movement is alive and well and certainly being emboldened by stories such as this. Yeah, and Tamara, when you look at his recently announced plans to this initiative to shake up the suburbs through racial housing mappings, it gives you pause, I mean, because you see this creep of the government into more and more aspects of our everyday lives. Well, we actually can look at this HUD announcement. It actually stems from the late June Supreme Court uh, ruling on disparate impact, which is going to allow prosecutors to determine racial profiling and discrimination based on the makeup of neighborhoods. Are you kidding? We should be terrified. John, you said it so diplomatically. I'm going to add a little bit of beef to that. This is the Obama administration trying to put teeth in a Supreme Court ruling that is all about taking our liberties away and using information against the people. And we've seen this demonstrated most recently by the IRS. Mm. Well, we'll see what happens and we'll keep you posted. Uh, We want to talk about another issue. Over the weekend, uh, General Wesley Clark spoke to... Uh, discussing how the U.S. could possibly prevent attacks from self-radicalized young adults. Uh, Let's take a look at what he had to say. In World War II, if uh, someone supported Nazi Germany at the expense of the United States, we didn't say that was freedom of speech. Uh, We we put him in a a camp. They were prisoners of war. So uh, if these people are radicalized and they don't support the United States and they're disloyal to the United States as a matter of principle, fine, that's their right. It's our right and our obligation to segregate them from the normal community for the duration of the conflict. John, he's talking about segregation and it's 2015. Is that realistic? No, and uh, I would question General Clark's history on World War II, uh, there were many people who were considered defeatists and who said we were fighting in the wrong war and the like. 
Uh, certainly the publication Social Justice by Father Charles E. Coughlin in Michigan is a case in point. And the government would shut them down using the post office, but as far as interning them, there really are very rare cases about it. Fritz Kuhn and the American Bund uh, is one exception, but it's not a big one. No, I don't think it's going to be very likely today, and it did not reach the stage that General Clark's words led it to be at in World War II. Tamara, the uh, Reverend Franklin Graham took it a step further. He's actually wanting to create a ban of all Muslims from entering the U.S., and in a Facebook post wrote this, uh, we are under attack by Muslims at home and abroad. We should stop all immigration of Muslims to the U.S. until this threat with Islam has been settled. Also pointing out that during World War II, the United States didn't allow Japanese or German immigration. So my question to you, is that realistic? That, is that not flat out discrimination? Well, I, I say no to internment. That can't be good. But what Franklin Graham is making is a larger point, along with Senator Rand Paul. America should have the right to scrutinize who is coming into our nation, especially from countries that have made blatant um, proposals to do us harm. So there's nothing wrong with a sovereign nation wanting to protect its citizen. In fact, it's the duty well, and responsibility of the federal government. Raises a lot of eyebrows, whether you agree with them or not, about how far we're willing to mm -hmm. take our security in the name of freedom. We'll have you both stick around. We've got more to come here, including uh, decades of hostility coming to an end as Cuba officially reopens its embassy and the U.S. raises its flag uh, over Cuba. What can, we expect, what can we expect from this new relationship right after this? a controversial character who said some useful things, I think, and brought some people into the Republican tent. But he jumped the shark yesterday. He's dead to me. And uh, no, seriously. He's dead to you. I, yeah, seriously. No, I mean, he insulted every veteran, every, certainly every veteran who's a POW, which is and with these insane statements about how it's, as if it's your fault that you're captured or shot down, and with a total lack of respect for not just John McCain's, but I think other people made this point, Jim Webb made this point, for other people's military service and sacrifice. So I'm, I'm finished with Donald Trump, and I don't think it's going to... Uh, and I don't think I don't think I'll stay up in the polls, incidentally. You cannot regulate 21st century industries with 20th century ideas. The pace of innovation is too quick. It, I, if I had explained to you what Uber was five years ago, it would have been impossible. Ten years ago, completely impossible. The pace of change is so fast that the ability of government to keep up with it, it just can't. And her take on Airbnb, Lyft, Uber, these sorts of things, is a, is a perfect example of someone who's trapped in the past and cannot understand how much the world is changing and how much it's going to change in the years to come economically. There are some good obtrusive inspection regime. It is good. The snapback provision at the UN that allows Russia and China not to veto, that's good. But it is a 15 year agreement. At the same time, um, you know, it's, it's, if I were voting and I was a congressman for yeah. 15 years, I, I'd want to just work on the hearing, see what's going to come out. I think is a condition for improvement in the relationship. There should be the release of this reporter, the Marine, the FBI agent, as a gesture that Iran is right. entering as a community of nations. And welcome back for our roundtable. That group of clips that you just saw was something we like to call the Monday, Sunday show roundup. And joining us once again is John Gizzi, Newsmax chief Washington correspondent and attorney Tamara Colbert. Thank you both for staying with us. Well, folks, the weekend talk of Trump and Iran dominated the Sunday political show. So we'll ask you first with you, John, whose comments mm. resonated the most? Who had the most successful Sunday show appearance? Was it Bill Crystal? Was it Rubio? Was it Bill Richardson or your choice? Go ahead, John. Uh, I guess I should pick talking head du jour. Uh, in this case, I'd have to say Bill Richardson, because any time someone breaks out of the Democratic pact and says something critical about what is coming down from this administration, it's big news, and you'll know it. And Bill Richardson was United Nations ambassador under President Clinton, as well as a former congressman and governor of New Mexico, and I might add a presidential candidate briefly, so his words about the treaty will carry a lot more weight than those of maybe a half a dozen Republicans 
who were seen on the Sunday talk shows. All right, Tim, right, well, last word to you real quick. Who won the Sunday shows in your opinion? Okay, we Tomorrow. apparently are having some sound issues. Tamara, we apologize for that. Hopefully we can get that resolved and, and find out who, who won in your eyes. We'd like, <laughs> to, we'd like to hear it. We really do. Tamara, John, thank you both I for guess joining it's us. Uh, now we want to take a look at this weekend's <laughs> headlines and punchlines.